Okay, let's start Welcome calibration of TV. This disc has been divided into two sections. Recommended setup and advanced setup. If you've never optimized your TV before, we strongly advise you follow the recommended setup option. Alternatively, if you are feeling confident or have done this before, our advanced setup section provides more complex content and a more extensive range of test patterns. If you're playing the disc for the very first time, select the step-by-step -step guide from the menu. Alternatively, if you're already familiar with each procedure, or want to jump to a particular test pattern, select test patterns. Finally, if you want to see the difference your changes have made, you can select one of the short videos in the check the results section. Welcome to Know How Picture Perfect. This guide has been designed to show you how you can greatly improve the picture quality of your TV using test patterns created specifically for TV optimization. The whole procedure should only take around 13 minutes to complete. Don't worry, you don't need any prior knowledge to get started. We will guide you through each of the tests one step at a time. Once you've completed the procedure, you can sit back and enjoy the best possible viewing experience achievable on your new or existing TV. Before we begin, we'd like to explain why optimizing your TV in this way is such a good idea. After all, if you've just bought a new TV, why would you need to? Shouldn't the picture be amazing out of the box? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you may be surprised to learn that your new TV has had its default picture settings preset by the manufacturers to best suit a store environment, not your home. The reason for this is to make sure that their range stands out amongst all the other makes and models on display. This is a challenge in a brightly lit store, so to compensate the contrast, colour and brightness settings are turned up to the maximum. The downside is that although the picture looks great in the store, you're likely to be disappointed when you turn on your TV at home, because the picture will be overly bright and the colours unrealistic. By optimising your TV with Picture Perfect, you're effectively readjusting the TV picture settings to best suit a home environment, and better still, to the actual room it's in. The picture will appear noticeably different at first. It will certainly be dimmer than it was before, but now you're going to see a far more realistic display on screen. One that's richer in detail, with a picture that perfectly balances the correct levels of brightness, colour and contrast. For sure you'll be delighted with the results. You can run the test on as many TVs as you want with this guide. So if you also have a TV in the kitchen or bedroom, for example, you can customise the settings for those as well. Oh, one other thing. Optimising your TV settings in this way will reduce the amount of energy they use. So not only will you enjoy a great picture, you might save a few pounds on your electricity bill while you're watching. Before we start working our way through the test patterns, you need to make sure there is no bright sunlight shining directly on your TV. You may have to close the curtains or blinds for this. You should set your room's lighting to how it would be normally. As we mentioned in the introduction, we're going to use a series of test patterns as a guide to optimising your TV. Throughout the guide, we'll describe what you need to do before showing the relevant test pattern on the screen. The test pattern will remain on the screen for several seconds. When it appears, you should press pause on your player's remote control. Remember, all of the instructions on how to use the test patterns are contained in the user's guide with included in the case. You'll also find a colour filter card. We'll be using that later, so keep it to hand. As well as making any adjustments to the room's environment, you should familiarise yourself with the menu buttons on your TV remote and the remote for the device you are using to view Picture Perfect. We will refer to them as either your TV remote or player remote throughout the tests. Okay, are you ready to get started? Then we'll begin. Come on, let's go. Q1. 
Q8FN. Let's set up this big boy. Let's begin with the color temperature and brightness pattern. Starting with color temperature. Firstly, it's important to let you know that color temperature is not the same thing as color. To explain, if your TV screen was a painting, the color temperature would represent the canvas upon which your picture is painted. The color of the canvas would subtly affect the colors of the paint upon it. In this case, a warm color temperature would give everything a brown, orange or yellow tint, whilst a cool color temperature would make everything slightly blue. Now, open your TV menu setting using your TV remote. We have provided a quick reference chart in the quick start guide for some of the most popular TV manufacturers menu settings. If your TV make isn't listed, refer to your TV's user manual. Once you're in the menu, look for the picture settings option. This will also have options for brightness, contrast, colour, etc. You'll probably be able to see something on the menu referring to the picture mode. This will most likely be set to something like dynamic or standard, but could be movie, game, sports or something similar. You need to choose the most normal mode available here. So something like standard would be ideal. You should avoid all dynamic modes as they can affect optimization. As we want to start from a level playing field, the next thing we need is for you to turn off any picture enhanced settings your TV has. These have names such as dynamic color, dynamic contrast, eco or power saving, MPEG or edge enhancement, skin tone enhanced and so on. You can turn these on again later but you may find you don't need to once optimization is complete. At this point, pause the disc using your player remote and ensure that any other modes are turned off using your TV remote. You might have to dig around a bit in some of the settings to find all of the modes. Refer to your TV's manual if you're not sure. When you're done, press the play button to carry on. Most TVs will allow you to choose between a warm or a cool colour temperature. Some TVs might have a number instead of the colour temperature. What we're looking for is the same though. If there is no colour temperature setting on your TV, you can skip this step. The first pattern that we're going to look at is a grayscale pattern called a pluge pattern. On the pluge pattern here, the centre section highlighted needs to display as grey. We are only focusing on this centre section for now, ignore the parts of the side for the time being. It shouldn't have yellow or orange or blue tints within it. It should be as neutral a grey as possible to your eye. Pause this now and using your TV remote, locate the colour temperature setting and adjust it until you're happy with the results. Looks like standard is the best, but cool also is looks okay. It's so hard to save to be honest. Okay, let's just leave it for on the standard for now. That's it. You've just completed the very first part of optimizing your TV. We'll now move on to brightness. Brightness often has two different elements, and this can be confusing. One of the elements is called backlight, and the other is called brightness. 
Not every TV has a backlight option, but many do. Backlight controls how bright the lights behind your TV screen are. The higher this number, the brighter these lights will be and the more energy you will use. The brightness is the amount of backlight allowed onto the screen itself. Maximum backlight doesn't make sense if you are running the brightness at a low setting. Ideally, you need to set your backlight to as low as you can without it seeming dark, but not too high that you let light bleed out of the sides of the screen. Somewhere in between is a good start point. Back to the Pluge test pattern. To ensure your TV can display every single shade of grey, the grayscale range of a television extends slightly below black and slightly above white. You should look at the Pluge pattern on the screen now. The black background is considered to be video black. We're now going to work on these bars. What you need to do here is lower the brightness of your TV until all of the three bars on each side disappear into the background. Now start increasing the brightness step by step until the outermost black bars just barely become visible. You really need to strain your eyes to see it. Those outermost bars represent what was mentioned earlier as below black. For the purpose of the video signal, they are considered to be even darker than black. By allowing the below black to show, you're ensuring that all shades of grey, including black, can be displayed. The two inner bars should be visible and more noticeable than the below black bar. If you can only see two stripes, adjust the brightness with the darker one disappears. Then increase it until the stripes just reappear. Okay, when the pattern appears in a moment, pause the video using your player remote and adjust the settings using the TV remote. Backlight first, then brightness. Okay, backlight, backlight first. Oof, that's way too much. Okay, let's start from the middle. Minus three is perfect. It's now time to adjust the contrast. For this, we are going to move on to a new test pattern, one which we call the grey ramp. Notice on this pattern, the top half is mirrored at the bottom. This is to ensure the contrast is consistent on both sides of your TV. Now look for the three dots at the sides and in the middle. We're highlighting them here. These dots are your end markers and the dead centre marker. Notice how the end markers don't go all the way to the end. Remember how we talked before about below black and above white. Well, the sections of the ramp pattern outside of these end marker dots are below black and above white. You now have quite a simple task. Using your TV remote, turn the contrast setting up to 100% or the maximum your TV allows. You crazy? You'll probably find it appears quite intense. Now check out the above white and below black areas beyond the end markers. You need to lower the contrast one step at a time until you have a clear and distinct step from one shade of grey to the next. Starting right from the above white marker to the below black marker. The areas beyond those dots to the left and right are above video white and below video black. 
Ideally, you should also see equal steps through all the shades from above white, through dark grey, through black. If you can't get all of the steps in the darkest range of the display, which is quite possible depending on the type of your television, this is okay. In this case, make sure that you can see the steps between white and above white. Just do your best here to maximise the total number of steps displayed in the grey scale. Don't forget to pause the pattern before making your adjustments. Ah, now I, I get it. Here it's lane, line, no lane. So now I can see the difference between the last two, like I should see. Oh, now it's too much, it's like just one big white square here. Okay, 40 is perfect. For me it's okay. Okay, we're now going to optimize the color settings on your TV. Before we start, use your TV remote to find the color setting and also hue and tint if they're available. Refer to your TV manual if you need help. You now need to use the color filter card included in the case with the guide. On the card are three filters, one red, one green and a blue one like this. These filters are specifically designed to block out all colors apart from the one you look through. A bit like this, blue. Red, green. So how do we use it? This color bar pattern is used to adjust both the color and the tint of your display. You will need to adjust the color setting while looking through the blue filter. What you are trying to see is this exact pattern. Six black blocks with no interconnecting lines on a plain blue background. Start with the color down near the bottom and work upwards until you match it. Blue is by far the most important of the three colors to get right. It has the most impact of all the colors displayed by your TV. Now red and green are a little more complex and will depend on your TV. If your TV has options to adjust the tint or hue, then we're good to go. Otherwise you may well want to ignore the red and green filters. For red, you're trying to make it look like this. You need to adjust the tint or hue settings to get the pattern to look like the image shown here. Don't worry if you can't get it exactly right. And green, well it should look like this. The green setting is particularly difficult to achieve unless you have a professional monitor. I suggest you focus on the blue and have a go at the red if your TV lets you. The ideal output is printed in the user guide. Refer to that and remember what you need to do to adjust the color pattern. Remember to pause when the pattern appears. Okay, let's have a wee shot about colors. Twenty seven looks perfect. Thank you. 
27 looks one of the best with filters. Let's go. We're going to use a new pattern called overscan. The intention here is to try to remove the overscan on your picture and make the image as sharp as possible. Firstly, I need to explain what overscan is. On an old style TV, your picture had to be projected bigger than the visible screen. On these old sets, the manufacturer picked the screen size and covered the edges with a border. This meant the edge of the picture was hidden, resulting in what we refer to as overscan. These days, we have these amazing flat panel screens with perfect geometry and a picture that goes right to the very edge. But believe it or not, manufacturers are still overscanning the picture. Luckily, most new TVs have a way to fix it really easily. On this pattern, you can see a measure of screen size. If your TV is not overscanning, the measure will go right down to 0%. But if there is overscan, it will be stopping around 5% or 10% all of the way around. That means you could very well be missing out on 5 to 10% of the picture you My TV is okay. What's worse on a modern flat screen HD TV, a HD picture has been designed to be displayed exactly the same shape and size as your TV screen. So any overscanning will stretch the picture, making it slightly distorted. If you can't see the very edges of the screen, look for options in your TV menu such as overscan, just scan, screen fit, full pixel or similar, and adjust or select them appropriately. They are often under aspect ratio settings, but some TVs bury the option in other menus such as system settings, so you might have to have a good browse around the menu. Refer to your TV's manual if you're not sure. When you find this setting, you should see the overscan pattern shrink a little bit and reveal the very edges. Pause the pattern while you have a look at this before we get started on adjusting the sharpness. Now it's five percent, so it's wrong. So fit to screen on, and problem problem solved. That's it. And sixteen by nine, of course. Hopefully, you have now found the option and retrieved any missing bits of picture. We are going to use the overscan pattern again, this time to set the sharpness of the picture. This might also be called softness on some televisions. Looking at the overscan picture and starting with the sharpness setting at its lowest, very slowly bring it higher until fuzzy edges appear around the white and black lines and text. Then bring it slowly back until you reach the setting that looks just right to your eyes with no fuzziness. Remember to pause again. Six, seven, and eight looks no, eight is over scan a little bit, it's too sharp. Okay. 
like a sixth side. Great, you have now completed all the stages of the test patterns and nearly finished your TV's optimization. We just need to tidy up some loose ends and then you're done. Firstly, when you go back to the menu in a moment, you'll find some demonstration videos under the heading Check the Results. Take a look at these to see how your newly optimized TV has improved the picture. Remember at the start we said that colors would be more natural and you'd see more detail. Well, you should be seeing that now. You might think that the picture is a little dim at first, but don't forget, as we explained earlier, you're comparing this picture against a level where the contrast and brightness were set to grab the attention in a store. You'll now be rewarded by a more naturalistic picture in finer detail, oh, and save on energy too. Don't forget, you've only set up the input your TV is connected to to watch this video. So if, for example, you're watching this on a Blu-ray player connected to the HDMI 2 input, then it's possible only HDMI 2 has been set up and not the other inputs to your cable or satellite devices or games console. Your TV might have an option to automatically copy settings across to all other inputs. If not, you can do it manually. We've left some space in the user guide for you to jot down your optimized setting numbers. We suggest you do that for future reference. Don't be afraid to run through the process again. Now you're more experienced, you might find you get even better results. Remember, if you need any help at any time, you can visit our website for support. The address is displayed at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for optimizing your TV with Know How Picture Perfect. We hope you enjoy your TV's perfect picture.